Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the Church with Gun Mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Jesse Mapeluso back on the show. David Nyhill, comedian, author, speaker, is uh, in as well. Good to see you guys. Thank you very much. Good Thanks to for see having you. us. So that was my first ever high five, I think, in America. I've been avoiding them until now, and she just kind of left the hand hanging, and I just felt all American for a moment and went for it. So it's a it, rite of passage through the hand. They don't have that where you hail from, huh? They don't do the high five in Dublin? Yeah, not, not really. It's just more of a, a head nod and good good work there now. Leave me alone. Keep your distance. We the, were, the high five or the beer you guys have in the morning, <laughs> the five brews before noon? I don't know. I think that's a vicious rumor. I think we're the, <laughs> we're the second largest consumers of tea in the world, but no one ever talks about that. So somehow the alcohol consumption really stuck, although I think we're like the 19th largest consumers of alcohol in the world. So we're not even in the top yeah, 10. Yeah, you got to prove that. I know. No, it's pretty disappointed. No, we, we th- it's a sexier story. The tea, and it's called tea toddler when you don't drink, exactly. right? So it flies in the face of the fun booze stories. But maybe it's just Conor McGregor that screwed everything up. <laughs> well, he definitely hasn't been helping us when we're like, those stereotypes are not accurate. And you're like, didn't that unemployed construction worker come to Ireland, take up mixed martial arts, beat up with people, take all the money, found a whiskey company, sell that, go home and buy a pub that he was already barred from. And we're like, oh, damn it. That's exactly what he did. <laughs> right. Punch an old guy in the pub. He, is, and banned. Is he bought the actual pub where he punched that guy and was banned from it. And he banned subsequently the old man he'd punched from the pub so you're like well that's a power move you know (laughs) there was a band back in the 90s called better than ezra oh i remember and uh, they had a hit and better than ezra is named better than ezra because there was a band named ezra so they said well (laughs) <laughs> we won't call ourselves Ezra because the band Ezra was suing them or something. Yeah, so they really. said, we'll change our name better than Ezra. And that's basically the band naming version of buying the pub you were banned from. Yeah, ex- especially when you're of a country that's kind of known in America for stereotypically loving a good pub. And you're like, if I give him $600 million, what's the first thing he'd buy? And you're like, a pub that he's already banned from for yeah. fighting. And you're like, God damn it. Connor's definitely set the movement back quite a bit. But maybe you can rectify it a little bit here today. Me? By- no, I'm, I'm likely to sink it deeper. But it's funny the impact to him as well that all of a sudden, I don't think we were dominating sport at anything and now all of a sudden we're the number one best rugby team in the world like that there was a catalyst of him being so good at what he was doing at one stage until he went off the rails a little bit but there was definitely the whole country going geez he's the first guy ever that came out and went i'm amazing and we all went well you wouldn't normally say that being irish you meant say i'm terrible and then you just turn out to be amazing that's the way we do it here but he was the first ever person i can remember in my lifetime in ireland going i'm amazing at this and we all went no you're not gonna be let's turn in and watch it go horribly wrong and then he was doing great we're like well we're gonna have to see this end badly we better keep watching yeah and it may be ending badly i'm not sure when his next fight is yeah it's hard what is he doing now is he just relaxing at his pub that he's not banned from anymore well, you know, my, my friend was training him, funny enough, you know, because we're all one person removed in Ireland. So I, I had a friend of mine that was his trainer, but he's, he's always keeping fit and keeping busy. And his an interesting story. Whether you like him or you don't like him, what he achieved. And he basically brought the whole UFC fight thing forward about 10 years in terms of like contracts for the fighters that are in there, the social media plays, the other avenues they have for business. So even though it was stereotypical, selling whatever you created for 600 million is still pretty good business. And you're like, I've just got to drink that whiskey. So, I mean, the signs were there. He was drinking the whiskey before the fight in the promo area. And you're like, is he? Are, is that the actual whiskey he's drinking? Isn't he fighting tomorrow? It's probably it's fighting not a great fuel. idea. <laughs> yeah, Slam a couple is. shots of whiskey before you get in the ring. So how did, uh, David, how do you find your way into comedy? Me? I, I definitely got lost. I was never planned on doing it. It would have been on the high, definitely on the high list of things I didn't want to try ever, but... Yeah, I was always afraid of public speaking, and I was in San Francisco, and a friend of mine sadly suffered a spinal cord injury, and they were trying to convince someone to host a fundraiser, and I got strong-armed into doing it. I was trying to say, like, listen, it's a crippling fear, and they're like, hey, I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm like, ooh, you have a good point there. Uh, I better try and get over this. Uh, so I ended up hosting it, and I did fairly well, and the comic that we'd booked on the show had asked me if I wanted to open for him, I think, in the Punchline in San Francisco at the time, and I didn't have the heart to say I have no experience doing comedy whatsoever, so you just say yes. Yeah, it kind of snowballed. Now, hold on. I don't have my list of topics that we promise to put out here every time, Chris. But now I have it. Now you have it. Now I have it. Yeah, 
I don't know how to. Yeah, my problem is, is I try to convey things silently, but pointing <laughs> at things just doesn't. That's not enough information, so no one knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Jesse May, what are you up to these days? What's on your mind? I uh, well, I have a Netflix show coming out promotional wise. It's called Surviving Paradise, so that's going to be out on Netflix soon. What is that? It's basically like a, a survival show on Netflix. A somewhat of a version of Survivor for Netflix with oh, a bunch really? of hot young people thinking they're going to enjoy paradise and then they have to go through a whole bunch of fun obstacles in the wilderness to survive. It's are, great. Are you hosting? Yes, I am. And where is the paradise? Greece. We filmed in Greece. Ah. Yeah, Greece is interesting. It's a very interesting country. Have you ever been there? Yeah, I I had a terrible idea once of going cliff jumping on Friday the 13th on an island that didn't have any form of medical support, and I broke my tibia and my fibia, so I know Greece pretty well. (laughs) Wow. I was there a lot longer than I intended, and I I remember getting brought to the vet with a broken leg and just going, this country is not ready to join the EU just yet. (laughs) (laughs) What happened? I genuinely went cliff jumping. I thought it was a good idea. And uh, I hit a rock or something wacky happened. Did you drink too much tea before? I was going to ask what was There was a decent amount of tea consumption. Yeah, was it green tea? Was it it Earl Grey that got you to jump the cliff? Now that I look back on it, and now that you've created a pattern that until this moment I didn't know existed, some Americans did make me play a drinking game, which Irish people would normally say no to, because drinking is the game the night before. It's called the Century Club that we'd never heard of, where they're like, you sit down and drink 100 shots of beer and you can't leave the table. Oh, I did that. I figured you might have. Yeah. I did it as a man show bit once. Somebody could find it. Um, Filmed the whole thing? Yeah. We sat down with Super Dave Osborne, God rest his soul, and thought it'd be funny if Jimmy and I sat and tried to join the Century Club, which is, um, yeah, it's 100 ounces of beer, right? Yeah, 100 We're, shots of beer without leaving the table or without peeing, basically. Right. and One every minute. That's, uh, I don't know, seven beers? I'm, I'm trying to think. Six, oh, no, no. Six is 60. Then 12 is 72. And then it's, it's nine. Yeah, it's like nine beers. It seems but, doable. But a shot. Nine beers is, is doable, but it's usually spread out over an NFL Sunday. And you're you know? peeing a few times. You got some breaks. <laughs> you got some nachos. You got some wings. You got some breaks. The, the nine <laughs> beers could be spread out over six hours. And some food. Whereas and there is food. nothing when you do this entry. Yeah. Do Which we I have didn't that? know. Well, I just comp- I just, they just pulled it up, actually. Uh, and what do you win? Just bragging win. rights that you did it? Yeah, you win yeah, all, bad hangover. All things involving drinking involve <laughs> bragging rights. They don't involve convertibles <laughs> or gifts, certificates, or things of that nature. They just involve you did it. See, this is why I think there's a huge difference between men and women, because this just seems like a total dumb dude thing. <laughs> It is you a, should do a dumb dude segment. This it, would go right in it. It's a dumb dude segment, but <laughs> but if you can have Super Dave Osborne sit with you. That's cool. And then you film it, and then you turn it into a segment. You're right. You're not wrong. Uh, all right. Let's, we'll play a minute of it. So. A toast to Super Dave. It's a great day, and hope we have a lot of fun, which I'm sure we will. And somebody drives us home. Exactly. Ew, it's real beer. (laughs) I got to piss and puke. (laughs) (laughs) That that is what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, this is the first time I've had any drinks since my new liver. (laughs) Congratulations. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Mm. It's a good idea, this bit. (laughs) You know what what I like about it? It is very well thought out. I convinced Super Dave that I was in Vietnam and I fought in that war at some point. With those eyebrows. Those are strong brows, Corolla. Yeah. Those things could fly right off a tarmac. I'm parched. (laughs) Good idea. I forgot how funny he was. Super Dave was super funny. And he was always that way, even if you were at a party. I'm going to start buying beer instead of the six pack. I'm going to buy the uh, 75. It feels easy page. until around Look this point. Look how beautiful month. it all was. Oh, why just it. Why didn't you just take it? It's a cleared section there. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, whatever 
All right, we got it. There's some point where I'm explaining to him I was in Vietnam, and he he thought I was in, <laughs> in Vietnam. You can find it on that on that thing, but. Um, yeah, whatever it is we did, we had to do it. You know, we weren't going to like put apple juice in there and fake it and then or have somebody else clear out, you know, 25 shots. And the the rules were what the rules Legit. are. And yeah, you made we'll it. film it. God, they'd have to they'd have to get to the end. <laughs> did you guys get through every single shot? I can't imagine. That would be we, impressive. Well, the funny thing, when we did it, there was so many Americans there and they hadn't unleashed the game on at least Irish people before that every one of the Irish people at the table except for one of my buddies who puked all over himself about 20 shots in uh, to everyone's dismay everyone else finished it so they didn't really know what to do now normally only one or two people finish it so we did Zambuga beer Zambuga which is a much more painful scenario yeah I remember waking up the next day just covered in candle wax and going, <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, have, I have no clue whatsoever. Oh, here's the end. Let's pull up that video of well, you. Here's, yeah, don't wax. find the one of me in candle. Here's probably me telling him I was in Vietnam, I think. What's the worst country you've been to? Vietnam. Vietnam, really? Yes. Were you guys at Vietnam? I, I did three chores. You did? <laughs> what was that like? Live in hell. <laughs> up, up to my chest in a rice pad. Really? M16 over my head. Leeches. Monsoon season rolling in and you there. You did three? Three tours. What was your rank? It's Colonel. <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? What the fuck is he talking about? Is he ever even a Cub Scout? years old. What the fuck is he talking about? I was five. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Viet- you know, the- I love that Super Dave is in his own merch. What a great. What a great character. What a fun, fun guy that was. I totally forgot about him. What did he, did he do like uh, obstacles and stuff like that? Was he like kind of an evil Knievel spinoff? I don't remember. Yeah, he was, he was a evil Knievel send up, you know, like he was making, his character would make fun oh, okay. of evil Knievel, oh, not make fun of evil Knievel, but it was always a gag. Yeah, okay. And it was that he was going to, put this gardening shed on these train tracks and he was going to live in there and he was going to get out just before the train showed up. But the train would always demolish the shed while he was in it. Right. You know, the stunts always went haywire, always went wrong. And he was, he died in uh, 2019. I went to his funeral. I went to his wake. It was a big thing. Everyone showed up because he'd, been in Hollywood for so many years and worked on so many shows and like knew everybody and his brother's Albert Brooks. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Albert Brooks is great. Yeah. And his, uh, the real last name is Einstein. So Albert Brooks is Albert Einstein for, for you youngins. Weird. Thank you for there. calling me a youngin. Oh, and and uh, he was, uh, he was, he was Einstein too, obviously. And uh, everyone was at the funeral. It was like you know Sarah Silverman and 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 uh, Seinfeld and and everybody. And it was you know the funniest eulogies ever because Albert Brooks was doing a eulogy, and 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 the room was filled with comedians. So everyone sort of put their comedy hat on <laughs> because you got an audience filled with comedians. You got a microphone, and even though it's a eulogy, the comedy shall shall flow. I hope Did nobody Dave's- was asking for the colonel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did Dave's uh, coffin explode at the end or anything fun? Did he have anything like they planned? Should have, they should have done something should like done that. Sakey. Have you seen the, the Irish one of those where your man pre-recorded sound of himself before he died? And it's all a joke at the priest's expense where he's in the casket and the radio kicks in and it's like, don't, don't leave me in here. It's dark in here. I don't like it. There isn't a priest out there, is there? I don't really like priests. You didn't go one of those at the end. And they captured footage of the whole thing genuine so none of the family know he did it apart from the one brother who helped him do it that's but fine. you'll find viral footage of it it's, it's on good. youtube huh it's on YouTube. everything's on youtube so he knows he's gonna die yeah he knew he was gonna die and he wanted to play a bit of joke on everyone at the funeral that's ballsy a little posthumous humor that's that's, that's what i thought it's funny you brought that the drinking game back to vietnam because when i jumped and it broke me leg 
they had no doctors on the island. There was only a vet. But someone said, there is a bit of an alcoholic doctor. There used to be a doctor, but he doesn't have any qualifications anymore. But we could maybe get him to come and have a look. And when he came and saw me, he had a stick in his hand and a bottle of Ouzo, the local booze. <laughs> and he said, put stick down pants just like Vietnam and drink this. And I was like, I have no idea what that reference to in any way, <laughs> shape or form. And that was it. He never explained it. Everyone's like, just don't go with that doctor. I think you're better off going to the vet from here. But yeah, that was a You really did go, you went to a veterinarian? I went to a veterinarian, yeah. <laughs> and we have Vietnam and vet put together <laughs> yeah, as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. It's all full circle. <laughs> so you you do you did the hundred shots the night before. I did, so that might have impacted so the So you're completely the wasted, day. and then you uh, wake up feeling like shit, and then uh, someone says, let's go cliff diving? I think I was the someone who said, go cliff jumping, which wasn't a good idea, and I did have to wash candle wax off myself, because apparently the night before I just picked up some giant candle, poured it over my head, and went, this won't be paid full in my current condition and wow. it wasn't but it was a bit messy tonight <laughs> yeah. it it's like a human I never, body I never did the century club again Irish <laughs> people shouldn't be allowed to do drinking games it's just not for us there's yeah. just no need to introduce a sporting element to drink it it's you know? sad I've never been admitted into the mile high club but I've done the century club with <laughs> super Dave so that's legendary though yeah. you have to do that in that scenario for sure you do well you don't want super Dave in the mile high club that's that's what you don't want. You want him in the Century Club. Did um, how did you break your leg? Now I don't want to bring back too many graphic details to oh, your I, memory, I, but I, I proper shattered it to be amphib. But it was like I have. It's one of those things in life where you're like, well, that's not worth the photo. Like these days, we do a lot of weird things for photos, and you're like, look at that. I went through some serious pain, but I got this amazing photo, and now I have nine likes. Whereas wow. I was, there was no one really to show that photo to apart from your family. So I have me jumping off the cliff into what looks to be surprisingly shallow water in parts, and then I, I, I hit something. Oh, gosh. so you made the water? I, I made the water. Yeah, but it's it's a it is about a hundred and something feet, and then oh, wow, I, that's a big one. Yeah, I've done a few stupid ones before. I'm. I, uh, did you pass out from that pain? Because that sounds very I, painful. I was close to it, yeah. And the, the Irish fellows I was with, none of them were good swimmers. So the plan was if I passed out when I hit the water, that they were meant to jump in and come get me. Uh, and they were not fond of that part of the plan. There was a bunch of local Greek kids that they had kind of swim over and, and drag me back. And then there was a old abandoned kind of hospital that had an x-ray and they managed to get keys to that and someone x-rayed it to bring to the vet and the vet had no idea but how it, how does this island work are it, there it no doesn't. moped rentals yeah, like it, don't tourists eat shit on a moped every, every right. couple and, and of weeks and they go to dr yeah and he they go to the veterinarian vet. yeah and he gives them the same thing so when we were in there uh someone was getting a piercing that he was also doing that was a side <laughs> oh, gig <laughs> this guy's hyphenated <laughs> Yeah, there was no direct flights home. I had to do a day trip around Prague on the way back with the connecting flights with a broken leg was the only way to get home. (laughs) And none of the other guys could drive a manual car, so I ended up driving with a broken leg around Prague. And the only way we were killing the pain, because the only tablets I got were for the vet, but they were generic tablets. So I was taking, like, uh, shots of, what's the stuff that... Ivermectin. Famous from the Czech Republic. <laughs> no, shut it. You, got, you were snorting ivermectin. Uh, we don't have that fancy stuff, so mm. I was snorting basically, what was Van Gogh's drink that he cut? Uh, uh, Loudnum. Absent, yeah. yeah. Oh, absent. It was absent mixed with the vet's tablets, and that's what got me real pregnant. <laughs> but you're, you're driving, right? <laughs> I was driving. Driving with your broken heel. This sounds Do like not a drink, drive. I was drive, uh, taking it in moderation, I suppose. I who say, for are these reasons. friends who can't drink or drive a stick? Good question. Because I wouldn't want to party with those guys. Yeah, I don't know. Because everyone in Ireland could drive a stick. We don't have manual cars in Ireland for the most part. But yeah, we were just on that age where they were starting driving. So I suppose I was 18 when this happened, maybe. 17. It sounds like the B side of Greek mythology like the drunk achilles heel version of the story yeah well it, it wasn't a great idea a years later i went back and i did that same jump a second time funny enough and i i was feeling quite happy with myself that i did it because i didn't want to be superstitious when i broke it it was friday the 13th and i was the one saying there's nothing in friday the 13th and then i did it and bang and i was like well i won't say that out loud again but I went back, I did it again, and I ended up having the beer in this pub. And there was an Aussie guy, and I said, oh, I was cliff jumping today. And he's like, oh, I heard it out about, about an Irish guy once that did that. Like, I think he broke his leg. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I definitely know that, Egypt. <laughs> I am he. Yeah, um, wow, so, yeah, the well, legend traveled through the town. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but we'd done it. I, I worked, I lived in Cyprus for one of the summers, and I had a couple of friends who had a bungee jumping company, and they, they had a crane. So to mess around with people who are waiting to do the next bungee, we'd go up in the crane and we'd jump without the cord. And oh, my hit the gosh. Water. So we'd, we'd bring it to about 100 and something feet, 
and I'd jump and I'd be like, did you not tie the cord? And we'd have a conversation and the next person would be sitting there going, what, what do you mean you forgot to tie the cord for this fellow? <laughs> like, so they hang it like, over the water. Oh, yeah. And, but I'd, I'd just jump straight into the water. Yeah, it was over the water in a place called Ayanape in Cyprus. And yeah, to mess with people, I'd go up and jump and pretend we forgot to attach the cord. And then you'd just see the next person who'd already pay for it. And they're like, well, you want it extreme. Do you still <laughs> want to go ahead with this? <laughs> yeah, you, you needed comedy. It sounds like you're chasing adrenaline. You need comedy on a safe stage. <laughs> yeah. Jesse so, May, what? Back to your show. Sorry, we got. No, it's we fine. Got we went on all the tangents. We, we went on a big tangent. We talked from about Greece. it. Where you know. in Greece? Well, uh, uh, Lefkada, which is um, an, uh, the only drivable island you can get to. In when that when part is of it? World. It's Netflix, right? Yep, Netflix, October twentieth. Sweet. Huh. Surviving Paradise. It was a lot of fun to I don't see. Have that on here. All these hotties try to survive. I do. Uh, is there, are they see. just random people that cast it, or is it all like Mr. Influencer? Um, oh, you mix. do. It's a, I it's got a, it. it's a fun, it's a fun mixed bag. We'll say that of people, but yeah, the island was interesting. A lot of goats around there, and uh, a lot of interesting dental work. I, I'm not one to talk crap about people, and I certainly have had my own tooth problems. But the the teeth in that in Lefkada were an inter- interesting. Visual. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, it does. It it. It does kind of set America apart from much of the rest of the world. It does. And it's interesting to see what different cultures value and where they put their priorities. And and obviously what's available for a certain society is... is, you you guys do a good job, but you do you do make fun of British and Irish people a lot for bad dental care, and then we come to your casinos and we're like, well, we don't feel so bad anymore. Yeah, <laughs> these we're, guys have no teeth. <laughs> we have no teeth, and we're in we're in uh, wheelchairs with oxygen machines. And well, you- what uh, what we have is a wide variety of yeah. teeth. You know, we, we have do. all these women on the Beverly Hills housewives with the caps and the veneers and just like white piano keys, perfectly uniform, yeah. you know, no way nature could have ever created. No, the those, Wayne Newton specials. Teeth. Yeah. And then we have the Pahrump, you know, long haul truckers never been to a dentist before. So we, we have this huge yeah. chasm. I feel like other countries live sort of in the middle between those two places. Yeah. Other countries are in Stonehenge, for the most part. So, so many, but in you'd be, Stonehenge. Yeah, the teeth look like Stonehenge. Oh, sorry, yes. But you'd be surprised at certain countries to have a huge reputation for dental tourism, where people, like Ar- Ireland is one of the countries most famous for us flying to somewhere else to get dental work do, done, because it's so prohibitively expensive in Ireland. So when I was growing up, you simply, you couldn't afford it as a working class family growing up. There was no insurance that covered it. So when I was like 12 years old, you know, just when your big teeth grow in, yeah. I knocked out the front one with my own knee jumping off a cliff like an idiot. I got to stop jumping <laughs> off the cliff. You got to just a, stop going to cliffs. I do. It was only a little window and there was no water involved. So this was pure my raw stupidity. But this was, a, I was obsessed with sharks as a kid and I went home and I had this big two in my hand. Like this is never going to grow back. Uh, and my mother's a nurse, so she should know like, oh, you got to keep that in milk or whatever, we shove it back in tomorrow. But I was so excited that it looked like a shark tooth. I was like, can I can I make this into a chain and like wear it like a shark tooth chain? And she was like, yeah, go ahead. It probably was one of the most questionable parenting decisions ever. Wow. So they never put that tooth back in. So for years, I had no tooth there just because they went, yeah, it's a good idea to let the 11 year old have a pretend shark tooth going around school like an absolute psychopath with a sure. tea hanging off him. And I only got it fixed when I went to Columbia, which was famous for. Very high dental care. Yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of people go to Columbia for different. Did your mom drink a lot of tea during the day? <laughs> <laughs> what, was it Rubio? <laughs> yeah, I hope not, because she, she was nursing and doing a good job and everything else. But that was definitely a questionable decision because we didn't really value dental work. Like it wasn't unusual to see someone with a few missing. All right, we got blah blah blog, which is one of my favorite games to play. I can well, it's all kind of explained in the title. So I think we should take a quick break. We'll uh, come back. We'll do some blah, blah, blog right after this. Simply safe. Well, you're going to squeeze in one more summer getaway before you take off. Protect your home with the latest innovation from Simply Safe Home Security 24 7 Live Guard Protection. With Fast Protect monitoring, Simply Safe agents can deter intruders through the smart alarm wireless camera warning them that they're being recorded and that police are on the way. So that's going to send them packing. Best home security of 2023. That's right. U.S. News and World Report. 
That's what they have to say about Simply Safe. We use these guys. Everyone here uses these guys. And when you move, pack up the system, take it with you. We can't do that with hardwired systems. Right now, my listeners get 20% off the Simply Safe system that they order when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. It's a huge offer, but it's a limited time. So visit Simply Safe, two eyes. SimplySafe.com slash Adam. Get those savings and a great system. There's no safe like Simply Safe. David Nihill is on the Adam Carolla <laughs> Show. Jesse May is here as well. And uh, these guys are doing dates, I think. Yeah, Jesse May's got dates. Also, podcast Sharp Tongue as well. Go to jessemay.com for the live dates and then uh, David Nihill. Dot com as well for his dates around the country as well or just uh, go find a cliff i bet he'll happen along <laughs> you should yeah, do your I'll next special on a cliff yeah probably <laughs> i was uh i don't know why but it came up the other day we were so devoid of actual entertainment when i was a kid they would do the acapulco cliff diving championships on the wide world of sports that was like a big thing we're it was, now it was in, epic we're in acapulco for the cliff diving champion, and you would just sit there and watch on your little black and white TV. I always so comically husky, a little bit chubby Mexican in a in a speedo. It was always a speedo. It was a That's speedo. Magical. Get up to like a flat rock that was about 110 feet, and sort of gauge the tide for a second, and then just do the swan off there, and you just sit and watch it. I think that's what influenced us. And I, I went, with, yes. the day I did it, I went with two girls. And I, I won't give you the whole thing of this because it's a bit too graphic to discuss. But one of them was one of the first girls in Ireland that I knew at least way ahead of her time to get a uh, fake cleavage. And mm-hmm. the fake cleavage was so big, it hit her in her own mouth and burst her lip when she did the cliff wow. jump, which I thought was probably impossible until I witnessed it. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. And then the second girl did it, and she did it full starfish. So mm-hmm. you know the way you're excited and you jump, you put your hands and legs out as a kid, but you assume you're going to pull them back in again by the time you hit the water. And I was just watching her drop down like a pin, and at no point was she motioning to pull all this stuff in together and took it in, and she took nothing and she split the parts you don't want to split. And we had to bring her to the same vet. <laughs> she had to go to the vet <laughs> right, to stitch her on. back up again. She had an episiotomy? She, uh, that is a word I'm not familiar with. But well, she had re- she, yeah. <laughs> she needed <laughs> stitches Episiotomy somewhere that you don't want to get them. Have you done that to someone before? That sounds like you're too familiar with the term. Have I? <laughs> I have ripped a vagina. The, uh, oh, con- <laughs> wow. oh, contraire. If I had a no, dollar, the, the vagina I, for me pulls in like a sea anemone when you put your yeah. finger in it. It actually sucks up like the change pouch. It's like someone threw the strong and string in a crown royal sack. That's what. That's my reaction. I don't tear them apart. I bring I, them together. I was worried that I was giving you a bad visual, but you just doubled down. On I, it, so I'm I in pain. Okay As the only one with that body part at this table, I'm in extreme pain. Yeah, I, well, had, I, I had to drive her to the vet. I think. Okay, I want to break down this game film for a second. Did she get spayed after? <laughs> neutered. I don't know what that means. No right. Sprayed. Hey. No spayed like, like, like what you do to a dog. Oh god damn it! Neutered, what do you people spayed. do to your dogs in this country? No wonder you have such hey, gentle care. In the, the, the dogs. In the words of Bob Barker, have your pets spayed and neutered. That's right. Have some respect. <laughs> the great, late great Bob Barker. When I did a hundred shots with Bob Barker back in the day, <laughs> when you were in Vietnam. <laughs> so, all right, let's just figure this out. Okay. You can jump off of high things into bodies of water, kids. I have done this quite a few times. A couple suspension bridges and Paradise, California and stuff like that. I'm the same way as you are. I'm into it. But it's more that you're into the challenge of it because it bugs you. Because you see it and you go, I could do it. I and you, do Then you think, then you puss out. Then you go, don't puss out. <laughs> and then you end up at a veterinarian's hospital uh, with uh, a in crazy Greece. guy. Right. But you need to hit the water not like a starfish, but like a needlefish. Yeah, you need to be drop. as thin as you possibly can make yourself so you just completely hit that water and go right through it. If you're going to go starfish, you got to bring it in before you hit the water. So she hits with such impact that her vagina actually tears. Yeah, and she couldn't get in the water again for another two to three weeks, which in Greece in the, in the midst of summer isn't your ideal holiday, and it, there was no doctor to fix that does, rip. Does the tear go <laughs> up or does it go down? It That's, goes in. I did not look, because when she jumped, the girl who had burst her cleavage had already jumped. She went first. 
Uh, and the second girl wasn't deterred by this. And this... And Joan, this was an eventful day. To, uh, oh, my God. This hill has claimed a lot of souls. <laughs> yeah, who needs a, a real <laughs> doctor's appointment? We could just jump off cliffs All right. All right. in it, Greece. It, it was epic. Somehow the, the lads I was living with wouldn't go do it, but the two girls were all keen to do it. So I went, I think I, I did it first, and then I think Sinead did it, and shout out to her, she's ever watched this, did it, and the cleavage got the better of her, and then her friend... D did it, and when D's the one who's player stuff, so I could see the blood in the water. I was up top; she jumped and was down the bottom. So I jumped the quickest way down to her to try and help because I didn't know what had happened was just to jump in again. When I jumped, I was wearing these kind of baggier type shorts, and they just exploded on impact when the war. I didn't pin drop it, so now I'm basically swimming towards <laughs> her with me nuts drifting in the water towards this lady covered in blood. And she's like, no, I need a girl. I need a girl. Like, get Sinead. And I was like, well, what happened? And she's like, I, I can't. I can't. And it was only when Sinead came down, then what actually was bleeding and split became kind of known. So I had to drive him back on the motorbike. So it was like literally me. On with, a motorcycle. I had a rented motorbike. So it's me oh my with my, my shorts busted and the nuts swinging in the wind. No other clothes. And the other girl with a burst lip from her own cleavage and the other one with the ripped vagina on the rented it was a little all like three of ADCC motorbike I think we were on the same bike and I had to bring her to Dr. Yanni the vet right and then I this was is so, after you went to him the first time or the no, first time? No. So this, I thought this was the most amazing day ever that I went back and told the Irish lads, listen, you can't pussy out tomorrow. This was one of the greatest pussy days fell out. Oh, I've ever witnessed. God. And I went back on Friday the 13th the next day, oh, and that was the end of me. So man. when they're like, we're going to bring you to the doctor now, I was like, no, I already know where we're going. <laughs> this oh, is my Dr. Yanni. God. <laughs> You can't make this shit up. No, you couldn't if you tried. I mean, you, and I have could, all the photos of it. It's at uh, EOS. <laughs> photos? I, I, yeah, I have all the. I've made the broken leg and me in Prague cruising around and me jumping in the air. We have <sighs> one. Yeah, it wasn't a smart. I've done some dumb stuff, but that was high up there. We Sounds did. like a horror movie. Well, first off, God bless those chicks. Cause <laughs> yeah. I have not met a woman who <laughs> yeah. would engage in that at all. Yeah, there's no, yeah, there's no cliff I'm jumping off of. I, I, I thought it was it. epic that they were so Oh, keen my to do God. It. And yeah. the pussy dudes who couldn't drive a stick, leave those guys and left, left at home in shame, right? Yeah, they, in their defense, they came back the next day, but I think only one of them tried it. One of them burst his, his lip or burst his nose or something as well. So, you know, we, we like you, we just watched it in the Mexican lads in Acapulco. It was like, there's no blueprint for figuring out how to go cliff diving apart from just going for it. The Red wow. Bull. Now that there's a Red Bull series in Ireland on, you know, the the movie that was huge in the States, of course, the ba uh, Banshees of Inish Aaron. Mm -hmm. But on the islands, that's set on, there's a natural giant kind of square. It looks like a swimming pool formed in the rocks and uh, limestone rocks off there. And that's where they do the Red Bull diving championships these days. So now all the Irish people are all about it because it, it's a huge big event that brings them down there if you look it up. But yeah, back in our days, we'd just see something on TV and like, we can jump from that high. <laughs> There's no warnings. Yeah. No. I like psychedelics would be a good introduction for a lot of people because <laughs> yeah. you can make those same experiences just sitting. <laughs> well, you could just you don't have, have to like get a, off the beanbag to, to go have anywhere. that experience. <laughs> you don't need to leave the beanbag to feel like you've but, flown off a cliff. Yeah, I should have done that on hindsight. There was Try a, some a psilocybin. Of, there was a stink lack of psychedelics around. But I did... I just no concept of the damage you could do to yourself because there's no one in your science life that pops up and is like, oh, did you know water becomes strangely dense from a certain, the higher you go and the faster you hit it, you're more likely to, to mess yourself up. Like you don't run that calculation ever. So you just keep jumping higher and higher until something goes pop, right? And w <laughs> when it works, it's magical and it's effortless and you feel nothing. Then, then you move up another 20 feet and all and of a sudden you've that, ruptured your spleen. That's kind of what was happening. But then there's a funny gaze. So I, I kite surf a lot, which is basically like snowboarding and having a giant kite and just dragging yourself along the water. And I used to go a lot under the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And as you know, that's famous for a couple of other things. And I, I brought my friend for his very, it's a kind of advanced spot for kite surfing because you have a lot of sharks, you have a lot of big Costco container ships, you have a lot of weird currents, the wind can be yeah. a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's me. That's Did you say, you. as you yeah. know, it's famous for a couple yeah, other things? That, that was, that was. Yeah, one or, one or two. But the thing is, a lot of people who jump off that bridge do okay at the end of it. Like, they actually break a few bits, but they don't die. So the impact zone, it's that pivotal how you actually hit the water compared to whether you survive or not. And I didn't notice. I was kite surfing with a friend of mine there. And I turned around, and he was kind of fighting with a guy for his board. And I was like, Where, who's that guy? And the guy was in all black. So I assumed it's another kite surfer who got into some form of distress, and my friend is helping him. But unknown to my friend, this guy had jumped, tried to kill himself, survived, 
popped up, saw my friend there start waving. My friend went over, but your man was in panic mode, and now he decided he definitely wants to survive, and basically just pulled the board off my friend. And we only figured it out after what had actually happened, because you never expect someone just to fall from out of the sky while you're already attached to something under there. So, I yeah. thought you were going to say you were para- parachute or sorry kite surfing under the Golden Gate Bridge and were hit by somebody who jumped off, in which case I was going to go, you have the worst luck no. aquatically yeah. than any other human I've ever spoken to. So this guy, because I watched a doc on this, people yeah, jumping off, bridge. jumping off the bridge, and some some survive. Uh, m- many right. are taken out by the current, but the the fall well, the doesn't current, kill them. The current moves there so quickly that the helicopter, the coast guard, will come and basically smoke bomb the water to mark where they were to figure out where they likely are, because sometimes the current under there can be moving at about five miles an hour, and it, it really does suck you out to see. They'll drop far. a smoke bomb to see how fast it's moving, what exactly, direction it's moving, to track where that injured person is likely to wow. be, or the body is like. But I didn't notice. I'm just under there kiting, and then this helicopter turns up and smoke bombs the area. My friends fighting with some guy with a board. I was like, what the hell is going on here today? <laughs> this is and what happened? Day. They made it to shore? Yeah, they, they rescued the guy. They never tell you if they survived or not. So if, if you're involved in helping rescue someone, as far as I know, they never follow up you. I think it's a law you guys have on the on the country. Because I remember coming across a guy once and we did CPR on him on, on the hills on the back of that and we found him basically having a heart attack and we were like, do we save him or not? And they're like, we can never tell you. And you're like, oh, all right. HIPAA stuff. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It was new to me. In Ireland, someone had called and go, he's grand. Well done. You're yeah. heroes now, right. lads. <laughs> but he, I, he, the they guy, should the guy tell survived. you... Well, look, if he dies, then he's waived his rights. So they should definitely tell you if he's dead. Yeah. yeah. If he survived, then maybe they shouldn't tell you because you could go find him and hit him up for some cash or, <laughs> or you know... <laughs> Something, but if they die, they should tell you. Yeah, I don't know because when the guy we found who was having a heart attack today, we were running and he was cycling and he had a pager on him and it was like old school. We're like, this guy must be a doctor or something who was having a go at this. <laughs> and we found him having a he was having cardiac arrest and we did all the like CPR stuff on him and all the rest of it. And then an ambulance came and a helicopter came and they took him and we were like, geez, I wonder if we saved him. Or not? Wouldn't that be great if we did? And we just had no way of finding out. And about a year later, a friend of mine was at a dinner with a couple of people, and they were talking about the lady's husband who'd passed away. He was a doctor, and a couple of people had tried to save him on this hill. And mm. that was the only way we actually knew what had happened. So we were That's wild. Well, we thought on the positive side, we're like, we definitely saved that fella. And then a year later, they're like, he died. We're like, ah, crap. <laughs> we, are, we need it, to do refresher courses on I CBR. That's better than finding out they lived and turned out to be assholes. Yeah, true that. You but know? He, he was a doctor. We were kind of hypothesizing as we were doing CPR. Do you think this was a doctor? Who has a pager these days? I don't know. It's kind of weird. I automatically thought drug dealer. On. That's yeah. why I laugh. True. <laughs> yeah. You're so pure. I was, uh, I have an aquatic story, oh. but it sort of reminded me of finding out. It's satisfying when you come around a year later or the next day or something and you get your answer. I was going to, we used to go to Baja, California. I guess today is just a show about young dudes being stupid, but we used to pack up pickup trucks when I did construction and you just go and everyone surfboards and motorcycles and stuff. And you just drive through Tijuana, Ensenada, Rosarita. Eventually the, the paved road stops and you just get to Baja, just desert, you know, and then you just pull out into the ocean you park right on the beach and yeah, you that's cool. throw m you know light m80s off of cigars and throw them at people <laughs> your friends and shit like that and uh we're, okay. we're we never had that we're at a beach in rosarita <laughs> and it, and and we went into like a we're just camping out but we went to a, like a strip club or something that night and one of the surfer guys because people go there and camp and surf and drink and go into the strip clubs at night one of the surfer guys got so blasted, maybe did a hundred shots that he got up on stage with the strippers and he got naked. So he was up there just shaking it, naked, drunk, and what have you. And we were all laughing at the strip club. And then uh, the following day, we're down at the beach and we're just making our way around. And we hear guy, group of guys are like razzing this other guy, like, dude, you were so wasted and you're dick was out and you're swinging it in front of the strippers and the guy was like we're in mexico nobody cares nobody saw it you'll never see these people again and we couldn't resist so we all came up like and fanboyed him like hey isn't that the dude whose dick was out last night and his fr- oh my god we gotta get your autograph it was fucking epic you up there with your dick out 
And of course, his friends went ballistic because that's the best thing ever. If you're if you're busting someone's chops and the guy's saying, "Who cares? Nobody nobody saw it." <laughs> yeah. And then a group come up of adoring fans. Well, and they're like, "One day this will be spoken about this, on the Adam Carolla that's radio right. show." <laughs> that's right. It it will uh, and maybe written about in a book or two. All right. Do you have blah blah blog? It's time for blah blah blog. The game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. People who are choosing billionaires over you and your family kick the bums out. We can't afford to care for everyone, but not if dem elites join the fascist GOP and just caring about billionaires tax the wealthy and extreme wealth in the same manner as a middle class family is taxed. Who does the blog belong to? Is it John Cusack, Randy Rainbow, or Tom Arnold? <laughs> I'm going with Tom Arnold because oh. that's the only person I know out of that list. You don't know Cusack? Oh. I know nothing. It feels, it's so Maybe verbose. Maybe you're not familiar with a little movie called Con Air. Oh, yeah. Classic. High Fidelity. Well, come on. Oh, gosh. It felt very verbose. It felt very... A little self congratulatory in the choice of words. I'm gonna go with Cusack. Now, that could be completely here's wrong. The, here's my beef with this. They, their argument is always like tax the rich. All right, so give all the money to the government and then count on them to distribute the money in a fair and equitable way. Or didn't we just spend? We just spent sixteen billion dollars on homeless in los angeles in california we got nothing but more homeless yeah, I was thinking so you like this notion of like if we just give them a few more bucks then they would finish they would finish that bullet train they're building to fresno it's like no they horribly mishandle money constantly so the notion of like give them a little money and then the government will pay the school teachers uh, if it worked that way i think Many people would be open to it, but if they're just if it's just grift and waste, then no. A Kuzak is nuts. I heard bullet train to Fresno, and I was like, surely they're trying to get away from that place. Are you trying to put <laughs> yeah. transport in that direction? No offense, Fresno. unless there's a good farmers market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going Kuzak on this one. The blog belongs to John Kuzak. Oh, oh! Yeah. I could just mm-hmm. see him saying it. Yes. Yeah. I know I'm very popular, but y'all gotta stop attaching weak-ass conspiracy theories and bars to my name, LOL. No hoes ever address me or at me with a fact or receipts. I am clout, bitch. Keep sucking my pussy. I was, it was early and I hadn't had coffee. Yeah, that does sound like, yeah. You guys, that's just rude. (laughs) Is it Cardi B, Doja Cat, or Megan the Stallion? Mm. This is a tough one. This is tough. This yeah. is real tough. Doja Cat. <laughs> I'm going to let you two answer first because I know. Doja's a strain of marijuana, I think. So I think she got her name from combining her cat with pot. That's <laughs> that's what I know. I don't. Cardi B says all this stuff all the time. I don't know why. Wh- Cardi B, I'm interested in Cardi B because Cardi B has turned into some sort of philosopher, some sort of latter-day Will Rogers or something. But she sits around and she's like, why do I got to give all my money to the government and the subway doesn't work? And then everyone goes, did you hear what Cardi B said? It's like, yeah, that's what everyone says all the time. We get really enthusiastic about Cardi B. Megan the Stallion, I don't, I not heard her talk much. She was the one who was shot in the foot, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I used her song in my comedy special, and that is the extent of my knowledge on this portion. You did <laughs> the show, yeah. At the end, Megan the Megan the Stallion. Well, there was, there was a young Irish, uh, well, the young American girl from Virginia that was doing Irish dancing to Megan the Stallion music, and it went super viral. And then all these people who couldn't get to the farmers market got a bit emotional about it and said it was cultural appropriation. And then oh. the Irish government had to kick into action, say, "No, that's cultural appreciation. We're only delighted about this." Right? And, yeah. So it was fun. That's how I, that's how I know her music. 
She well, she river danced to what, say that again to she Megan was river dancing to Megan Thee Stallion. That's tracks. fun. Ba- basically Irish dancing, but if you don't know your history, you don't know that uh, the fusion of black and Irish culture is what created uh, tap dancing and is what created jazz music. So like we've oh. been shagging it out for years. So like, you can't appropriate a culture we're trying to get you to appreciate. By definition, it's completely impossible. So she was getting all this hate on Twitter, and none of it was from Ireland at all. And the, the leader of Ireland kicked into action and said, uh, we love you. You should come over and dance for St. Patrick's Day. And she did. And then they put her in river dance, and she became the first black dancer in the 25-year history of river dance. That's oh, amazing. Oh, she was a black Irish dancer. No, she was a black American girl who was doing Irish dance in, in oh, America. Put it, oh, on, put it on TikTok. Yeah, her it. name is Morgan Bullock. And the story was fantastic because it was Irish people who were going, no, there's nothing wrong with this. We, we're trying to actively get you to do Irish culture. But yeah, it just, it just made it all hip and cool. And yeah, she's in Riverdance Tour in America now. At the wow. Wow. So when she's I, amazing. I, I yeah. was trying to tell a bit of that story and trying to do it justice in the comedy special I put out. And that was what influenced the whole name of it, which is cultural appreciation as opposed to cultural appropriation. And uh, yeah, it's funny. So they all come I, so that's circle. That's interesting. I agree. Most of the people that are, right, listen, I get, everyone hates me, but I, I will say this. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people all the fucking time mm-hmm. because see, we're pussies. And we, us in Canada, we're total pussies. We immediately like apologize. You know, they go like for something like blackface. You know what I mean? I go, listen, when I was 19, I dressed as Mr. T for Halloween with blackface, but it's not blackface. I'm not doing a minstrel show. I'm dressing like Mr. T. I yeah. did Mr. T and I did it because I liked Mr. T. So, I don't know why this is a pardon the pun slap in the black face to everybody. And I know nobody cares, but I just mean they try to grab all these celebrities and go, you dressed like so-and-so from uh, Orange is the New Black or something like that. And it's like, no, this is somebody they liked, who they appreciated, who maybe there's a picture of me from at age uh, 19. <laughs> wrestler from WWE. Well, Mr. T did a little wrestling there. Full head shave. Vietnam, Vietnam really messed you up. Yeah, man. The Agent <laughs> Orange scrambled yeah. my brain, dude. Yeah, Agent Orange got all over you. Is that Jim Carrey as Vera next to you? It's what my is buddy that? Ray. And Who? you want to talk about bored dudes? I'm over at my friend's house. <laughs> at my friend Todd's house. And I go, let's Todd. First off, Todd's the only guy we knew that had wall trimmers. That was a big ticket item. You have your own trimmer. He had his own. For a wall. Like your hair? Well, wall W. W A H L. Yeah. Yeah. Trimmer. Product placement. <laughs> yeah, <I was> thinking, <laughs> Sorry. Do they Not pay a, you? Because that's a spot. He didn't right hang there. drywall. It was yeah, like I was a, thinking. a wall trimmer. I was but, like, you're meant to have a background in construction where you trim and walls. Well, no you just walk up to the trimmer he and you go. He bought like this. a trimmer, and that would have been a huge item at any of our houses. Yeah, a super yeah. big expense. So we'd go to his house, and sometimes he'd cut our hair <laughs> or do we something had the like same, that. Lad call Ian. So. I grew my hair out a little, and then I said, I'm going full Mr. T. I grew a beard. (laughs) I planned this shit like two months in advance. I grew a beard. I grew my hair out. Then I showed up at Todd's house, and I said, now you got to give me the Mr. T haircut. You leave it on the side. We attach it to the beard. We leave the mohawk up top. I said, "Uh, okay. So I sat down and shaved my head, and my buddy Ray came walking in. And he's like, what are you two doing? And he goes, I'm, I'm giving Adam the Mr. T haircut. And he's like, why? And he goes, Halloween. And, and my buddy Ray's like, when's Halloween? And he goes, it's like two days. And Ray goes, oh, I'll be a Hare Krishna then. Do the Hare Krishna on me. And he just shaved and he <laughs> left the ponytail on the back. That's how we had nothing to live for. We had nowhere to be. We had nowhere to go. <laughs> so we had nothing to do. We had nothing to live for. I wa- it, People nothing, didn't hate you then. You were yeah. fine. If you tried that one these days, you'd want to have nothing to live for. <laughs> where you're like, we're going as Mr. T and Harry Krishna, two white dudes. To be like, that's that's the end of you, Let's. I uh, I got Mr. <laughs> T'd up through taking a stick, cardboard. I think. Oh, I think it was a um, a paper towel roll. Then my buddy lit it on fire <laughs> on the <laughs> stove and turned it into charcoal, and then just rubbed all the 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 charcoal on my face. And then I went as Mr. T, but I wasn't making fun of black people. I was paying homage to Mr. T. Are you yoked? You inspired Justin Trudeau at least. Are you yoked or is that a shadow? What am I looking at? Is that your shoulder or shadow? I was in, I was in pretty pretty good shape. I was in pretty good 
shape back then. Yeah, well, I had to pull off Mr. T. You know what I mean? I, 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 <laughs> I hit like the weights. <laughs> I got the chains. Yeah, you really committed to Halloween. It I looks like it, a criminal and his court-appointed lawyer yeah. who's had a bad day. I let, you know, Halloween's Irish. I love the way most Americans don't know that. Like, we don't you're, know you're that. You're coming here and you're claiming everything. <laughs> you stole our big K- Celtic Fagan festival and somehow <laughs> made that about dragging little chunky kids door to door to feed them peanut <laughs> the butter, way. which we don't eat. <laughs> We're like, what are you doing? That's not protein. <laughs> All right. So now, sorry, we're you down commi- to Megan, to this. Cardi B, oh, Doja right. Cat, or Megan Oh, oh yeah. Stallion. I forgot. I forgot to tell you. So then that. I was living in my dad's garage in North Hollywood. No prospects, no job, no college, no money. That was the Mr. T shot. No, no, no nothing. It was that's that. They was taken at a friend's house, but that's great. that's where I was in life at age eighteen and a half or nineteen. There's economy was bad. I had no job. I had no money. I had no college. I had nothing. And and the the Halloween weekend had passed, and I'd I'd. Uh, you know, washed off the black paint and the gold and the everything, but I still had the hair. Yeah, that you know? won't help your brother. I still had the hair, and I remember walking, <laughs> and I was like, I was telling my dad, my dad's like, you got to get a job, you got to move out. Find a job, move out of the garage. And I just came into the kitchen in the morning, and he just looked at me with this fucked up shaved head, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's going to help. Yeah, you're here for another month. <laughs> yes. At least well, another I'm, month. Based on all your information, you guys go, I'm confidently going for Doja Cat because you would linked weed and a cat. And I went, well, that that sounds about right. I have no idea if the other two and Megan Thee Stallion occupies a sweet spot in my Car- heart after that Cardi, Cardi B could be up there because this is the kind of thing she would say. I don't know if Do- Doja Cat's that outspoken. I don't know. What do you think, Jesse May? I I think it's uh, uh, MTS, Megan the Stallion, because I feel like this is a bait and switch. Yeah, I feel like Cardi B's been so vocal. Yeah, Doja, I'll go Doja Cat just just to, to mix it up. Well, that's, wait a minute, that's Dave, went. you want you want uh, he's right. going Cardi. I only went for it because you link cannabis and cats. So oh, technically, right. it's based oh. on your wisdom. Yes. All right, I'm going Doja Cat as well. Okay. The blog belongs to MTS. Do I uh, win something? Because it's two for two. The game just started, Jessica. You need to stay <laughs> off Twitter. That's what you won the award for. <laughs> the USDA puts Lucky Charms on the top of its recommended authorized human food pyramid. Tell me you see they're poisoning us. Is it Jessica Alba, Zach Efron, or the Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent? Oh, wow. Wow, this is a doozy. Diversity. Did this you is find? A real... Did you find this just for me? They're like, we need a Lucky Charms reference on this show. <laughs> 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 Americans campaigned against the one thing they invented. Yeah, that's what is true. On, what is on Ted Nugent's hat? What does that say? Oh, is that a joint? Come and take it. No, it's the and a log. The it's Gonzalez, probably Gonzalez? a cannon. I think it's. It's got to be some sort of ammo. With that Dude, chin, chin I'm, strap. I'm going for him just based on the hat. You're going Ted Nugent? <laughs> yeah. I don't know who he is, but based on that hat, <laughs> I don't know anything about You Twitter don't know the or... Motor City Madman? No. I, know, no. I do know Jessica Alba. I'll tell you that for free. Yeah. You're not doing anything against Alba, huh? No, I'm You're not. You're pro Alba. I just saw the hat, and I'm like, that's him. Whatever, <laughs> we're, whatever we're looking for someone guilty of. He looks like a man who grew up snorting Lucky Charms and then turned against him at a rally. <laughs> he... <laughs> He he hunts and eats his own venison no, and that's stuff like him. that. Yeah. All his secrets are in that chin strap. Zach Efron is really into the working out and traveling and seeing the world. Jessica Alba, what is she doing on there? But she makes like baby food or something, yeah, right? I think, she, I think she's another. That's a distraction. I think we're in between she Efron makes and baby Nugent. food. She can't be anti marshmallows. <laughs> I'm going Zach Efron. What? Yeah, I, I, I think Efron, too, it, it has an air of it, a lack of awareness. <laughs> it sounds like somebody who wants to sound like they know what's going on, but they have no idea. No offense to Zach Efron. I'm sure he's a very nice person. I'm just scared to offend Ted, Ted Nugent, honestly. I feel like there's pagan evil in that chin strap. Does that mean I'm getting taken out for not knowing who he was? I'm kind of pro anyone who's anti-Lucky Charms, I suppose, <laughs> by, by culture. Can we I'm okay you if that? you don't have those. <laughs> the blog belongs to Ted Newman. Oh, no! 
Let's take a quick break and we'll make this into a two-parter. We'll come back and do the rest of Blah Blah Blog right after this. Let me tell you about Angie, homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. You're home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. Jessa Mae Peluso is on the Adam Carolla Show. David Nihill is in as well, and we got a little more business. So what's the score? Is it- Jessa Mae is in the lead at two, and David and Ace are tied at one. All right. Why isn't there a rule that at least 50% of the news has to be focused on the good that's happening in the world, and then the other 50% can be unbiased reporting on the other stuff, typically bad? Like, why are we all okay with just reading the worst imaginable shit every day and then walking around acting like it's not affecting us? Wake up! I feel like he's trying to redirect us with the way he reads. Mm. Is it Katy Perry, Mm. Jennifer Lawrence, or Millie Bobby Brown? (laughs) Wow. Uh, Mm. Katy Perry... There's a reason I'm not on Twitter. As if people just get that messed up and go on that much of a rant and then just kind of walk out. They're like, there's the knowledge I just dropped on you. Goodbye now. Well, we're in an era where people announce things and then either want to take credit for it or just say, you know where I stand. You know, So they go, I don't think any child should ever go to bed hungry. Like, all right, my work is done. <laughs> but, fin- you know, we, you should be able here. to get from L.A. to New York in 10 minutes. <laughs> like, okay, your work is done. Like, you, you make these announcements, these proclamations. So everyone knows where you are. And we've separated you from the group of people who want kids to go to bed hungry. And now you've made your declaration. It'll never happen. And you'll never offer a solution. Like, here's how we would parse this out. Here's how we'd make this happen. We just make the proclamation and move on and that's the era we're living in all right Katy perry who always looks like she's thinking about something stupid she just has that look I mean, she was probably thinking about being linked to russell brand at the moment oh, which is yeah. not going to pass like a paper bag blowing in the wind no that's a rough one that story's got some legs then uh are these current tweets can i ask that question yeah, they're all within the last two it's from days, the, week. I think that's early seventies, most vital. a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's vital. It's vital information. Millie Bobby Brown. Oh, that's Millie Bobby Brown. Wow, she. I'm a hundred percent gone from Millie Bobby Brown because I grew up listening wow. to Bobby Brown music, and I'm assuming she's somehow related to him. Oh, and that's yeah. That's the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> so like, so otherwise, sister. it's a very ballsy name to have. You were listening to, like, <laughs> My Prerogative? Exactly. <laughs> oh, God, I hate that song. Um, I thought it was Millie Vanilli when he said it. I didn't know who Mil- I didn't know who Millie Bobby Brown was. Oh, but it's, now not, I do. it's not just me. I know yeah, I, Stranger I Things, right? Oh yeah, that's but doesn't even look yeah, like I her at all. No, she's, she's, she's all exists. grown up. And Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know. Does Jennifer Lawrence have kind of a ten cent head? This is all right. I'm going Katy Perry. Wow. I mean, Katy Perry's. A, I mean, she's a mogul. I know. I don't know that she would be that kind of. I'm gonna go Millie Bobby Brown. I don't know why. I just feel like it's it's. I feel it feels very juvenile. I'm dead. I'm locked on Millie Bobby Brown for no apparent reason other than yeah. It feels name. very like the blog belongs to. Come on, Dawson. Katy Perry. Son yeah. of a. This game is rigged. Yeah, it's, it's rigged for me to lose. I realize I don't pay your checks, <laughs> but <laughs> last one. Wow, mm-hmm. you're good at this, Adam. I feel Let's, like it's rigged. No, we're knotted up. 
You really picked Are one we? of the cleavage mm-hmm. We both have one, two. Right? Yeah, we both have two. Yeah, I'm going down so in the blaze of glory. This will settle it. Or we'll have to go into a bonus round. We're going to have to go to a tiebreaker for sure. Mm-hmm. Let's take a moment to talk about this. There is a full-throated purge effort going on here by the far right that we have not seen in decades. They are on a boycott binge and cancel crusade, trying to eliminate the existence of minority communities. Burning flags, banning books. We have seen this before. And it's happening everywhere, all across the country. Woke has just become another dog whistle. We must continue to call out hate when we see it as they keep trying to normalize it. If we go silent, this will only get worse. We cannot become numb to this. And then that's a book. That's that, not a tweet. Is that 140 characters or less? That's what I was thinking. Is it wow. Don Lamont, Gavin Newsom, or Alyssa Milano? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this is a good round. Don Lemon, we'll never hear from him again because he has nothing to fucking say. So that'll be that. I've said it a million times. Jeez, shots we'll never hear from him ever again. Um, he doesn't have original thoughts, so you won't hear from him again because anyone can have the thoughts he has. You just get them handed to you when you get your anchor gig over at CNN. Now, Tucker Carlson, you'll hear from again because he has original thoughts. Don Lemon does not have or Lemon does not have original thoughts. Uh, Do you consider that tweet original? Because it sounds like something that's just well, on a pamphlet. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's just that's the whole point. Is we don't need Don Lemon. This is not. There's nothing revelatory about that tweet. Uh, Newsom's been on a, a tear to ban book burning or something or whatever the fuck that pussy's talking about today. You know, basically, it's here's the game. The game is you try to shove a bunch of books in a school library that aren't appropriate for 11-year-olds to read. And then some Republican goes, I don't think 11-year-olds should be reading books about butt-fucking. And then they go, oh, so you're for banning books. And then they go, now, just the ones about butt-fucking in the library at the grade school. And they go, okay, I get it. So they want to ban books. We're back to, you know, Nazi Germany, 1939. And it's like, that's the game. So then they come out and they go, they're against banning books. I'm going to make a proclamation saying that I'm for books. And then they get to be the heroes. That's that's the game. By the way, how can you even ban a book? First off, who's even checking a book out from a library in 2023? Secondly, you can go to Amazon and get any fucking book you want at Here, four in the morning. Here's a fun. I went looking for a book that I read before two days ago and couldn't find any trace of it, funny enough. And it's a book called The Witch, La Bruja in Spanish. And it's about this lady who was kind of a behind the scenes advisor to every Colombian president ever. And she was basically just doing all sorts of weird witchcraft. And they were pure making decisions on her. And every administration for about 30 years in Colombia hired her. And I read the book when I was down there. It was hard to get my hands on. And someone was asking me about it the other day, and I was like, oh, I'm sure you can just buy it online. And you couldn't. It was the first time I went Ron DeSantis for... banned it? Oh, yeah, it could be. <laughs> one of your fellas. Someone <laughs> took it off Amazon. But it's funny. Uh, Ulysses was one of the most burned books ever. James Joyce's one back in the days. And it's funny how people emotional get about burning flags when a lot of people can't identify the flags of fla- correctly. Like yeah. If you burnt the Irish flag, someone would be like, is that the Mexican flag? Yeah. Or the Indian flag? Or is that yeah. the Ivory Coast? I'm offended on behalf of someone, but I'm not sure what that flag is. Let's get out there. <laughs> I know the Irish flag because it's draped on Connor when he makes his yeah. way to the octagon. Yeah, but you just you just drink a few beers and stare at it for a while. It becomes Mexico real quickly. All right, and Alyssa Milano is a crazed hyperbolic shrew who goes nuts with this stuff. So shrew, she's a fucking shrew. A shrew. Based on shots, I, I don't know who she is, but a shrew sounds like she's guilty. That's my pick in this race because no one's voting for you if you're writing that complete waffle on the internet in a public domain, are they? Mm. Am I wrong Wrong to think that there's always been some form throughout history of iconoclasm in every generation? Mm-hmm. Are you busting out big words again? Yeah. That was iconoclasm. Icon- yeah. Taking down statues, taking burning oh, books. Oh, yeah, yeah, bur- yeah, You know, I know it's crazy. Women are educated. We know words. I don't know. You do. G- Gavin. He had, he had that pussy ripping <laughs> word earlier, though, so you're one for yeah. one they on let this, us and into I'm sc- losing. Schools now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Irish women are allowed to get educated, but we can. I don't know. Newsom right. looks like he's one teeth whitening away from starting his own church. Yes. That terrifies yeah. me. Mm-hmm. And it, it felt performative. 
like mm. the, the the tweet felt performative and although politicians are a form Thank of you. performers but yeah I, you, you can take credit for that dawson you, you're really putting your all into these i i got i'm gonna go Alyssa milano oh dawson did it in a chick voice but is that that's what i'm saying like is he trying to redirect he also has long hair and the Don Lemon. I know. Don, now, I haven't heard anything from Don Lemon. Now, Newsom no, no, wait, wait, wait. just passed the bill <laughs> on this. Yes. Can we hear it again? But read it without you having that efficacy. No, don't put me English. No misdirects. Let's take a moment to talk about this. <laughs> there, is a full-throated pur- there is a full-throated purge effort going on here by the far right that we have not seen for decades. They are on a boycott binge and cancel crusade, trying to eliminate the existence of minority communities, burning flags, banning books. We have seen this before, and it's happening everywhere, all across the country. Woke has become just another dog whistle. We must continue to call out hate when we see it as they keep trying to normalize it. If we go silent, this will only get worse. Now I don't well, there's no, not Lano. become numb to there's this. There's no chance of these fucking blowhards ever going silent on anything because I have a thousand retarded opinions on everything all the time. So don't worry about them going silent. All right. What'd you go with, David? Uh, it's, it's so confusing. Ted Nugent. That, that pile of waffles sounds like every TV anchor or every politician I've ever seen in America. But I'm like, surely you couldn't be that nuts and still get elected. But I know from historical perspective, that's how this place works. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to pick the lady for no apparent reason or I've no who. Alyssa who Milano. Is. There you go. Uh, all in on her. What no do you idea think? Just See, now that he read it straight without trying to trick us, I don't, I'm not convinced that it's Milano. Now I feel like it might be, I don't even think it's Newsome. All right, go Don Lemon. Why? Because you've I'll had a go plan? I'll go Newsome and we'll all pick a different one. Okay. Yeah, we'll Let's see where it. the chips fall. All right. The blog belongs to Gavin Newsome. Oh! The ace man wins. For the win. I'm joining the church. Until next time, keep your fingers on your keyboards and your heads up your asses so we can play another round of Blah, Blah, Blah. All right, we'll do the news right after this. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Member Appreciation Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get the most out of your membership. Shop, earn points, and get rewards sent right to your phone or email. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, sign up. It's quick and it's easy. You can do it online or in the store if you like. Just ask one of their professional parts people about joining O rewards next time you visit and you can start earning points on your first purchase sign up for both email and tax and get even more out of your membership and right now members receive two times three times up to eight times O rewards points on select purchases those bonus points can help you get to your next reward even faster you receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points, and you can use your reward on your next in-store or online purchase. So don't miss O Rewards Member Appreciation Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and O'ReillyAuto.com. Uh, David, take your headphones and Fix them. open them up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bother me. It's going to yeah. bother you. What do they do? Yeah, I don't what know why. Do? Well, the do? problem is one is fully extended. All right, Chris, do the hey. news and they'll, they'll fix that. All right. So, um, David, I know you're not really familiar with a lot of our celebrities, but I, I assume you know who Britney Spears is. I definitely know Britney Spears. Yeah. Oh, my You've been keeping my her in my captivity. <laughs> what? Oh, you think? <laughs> She's available at the, a zoo. She's at a petting zoo now. <laughs> well, last week, a uh, viral video came up. You know, she does those videos where she just dances in front of the camera. And oh, yeah, is this the one with the she, knives? Yeah. yeah. Fun. Yeah. Dude, they look like a cry for help. Like, there's no amount of likes that's going to fix that mental issue. I, I'm ta- I, I said it. What, historically, what's going to look dumber? Free Britney or defund the police? Because <laughs> they're, they're both equally <laughs> horrifically bad ideas that end up in tragedy. But isn't, isn't the conservatorship also a tragedy in of itself? Like, we have to acknowledge the fact that people who you think love you, your family, who care about you, people who you hope are on your side and in your corner are taking complete advantage of you. We can't deny what that does to a person's psyche. 
in their in their psychology. Is, is that a knife in her hand? That's a that's a yeah. Yeah. That so this is, is the a latest of her. Let's watch some of it. So this is the video. Everyone's really concerned about her now because she's doing a dance. I'm more concerned about the dogs in the background. Yeah, some dogs are gonna come up in the back. So it just looks like she's in her. Is this Enya? Foyer. It's got it's it's got a vibe Probably to it. Chill to the chant. Yeah. Yeah. She's doing some fast spins. My mom used to hotbox her bedroom to this song. A knife in each hand. Dude, even the dogs are worried for his sanity. They're all lined up like they're about to do an oh, intervention. Oh, no, they're gone! <laughs> yeah. The dogs ran! They heard the... They heard the she, well, all right. I don't like her tile, because I'm into home improvement. Okay. I'm not a fan of the tile. It's very 80s, kind yeah, of David. bad casino, whatever, number one. Number two... She doesn't dance good enough to film herself dancing all the time. She dances okay, but she not your tongue. That's yeah. good at it. It's really significantly it better to me. I'm not going to pass judgment on that. I could not be that creative with two knives at high speed in my underpants. You're smart because right. the Britney Brigade won't come for you now. Well, I, hope I just think she's just having fun. I mean, who knows? Maybe she. Took a little edible after she made breakfast. Maybe she had some steaks for lunch and just wanted to. <laughs> it's, it's not going to end well. Right. So people are concerned. They actually went. To, she posted this on Instagram and everyone's commenting about, um, they, you know, she needs help. So she uh, she updated her caption in the, in the thing to say that the knives aren't real. Halloween is coming up. These are Halloween knives. Yeah. You, Halloween you used knives. that excuse in the past. That's right. <laughs> You're like, this was just for Halloween. Yeah. I'm not normally Wait. Mr. T. <laughs> yeah. The knives aren't real then. What about the sound effect? Does she have a sound engineer? They sure yeah. sound Adding real. that in in post? Did even she the, add it Even the post? dogs knew they were real. They, they are real knives. She has a Foley team for her. Instagram I need videos. her to stab one of those dogs <laughs> to prove to me those aren't real knives. Right, and yeah. if she did that, then I, I would be fine with it. That's a good. T- but she yeah. yeah, she disabled comments across her mm-hmm. entire Instagram. Well, it's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to see it, did it fall? If she did this and didn't record it, <laughs> did it even happen? Yeah. All right. Look, here's what we need to do. We need to hook her up with a sane celebrity. Like she needs to start dating Henry Winkler. Or oh, somebody that would who's, totally got, help. who's got a base. That would totally who's help. Who's got a little wisdom. He- you know what Henry I mean? I know David Winkler. doesn't even know who the fuck the Fonz is. He <laughs> comes from another I know planet. who Fonz is. I didn't know his real name. <laughs> All right. Like, we need to hook her up with a very stable Fonzie. human. The Fonz. Isn't the Fonz. he fairly well, old? That was a character he played many years ago. But he's a mensch. Of a human being. He's very stable. He what seems the, so lovable. Sweet. He's so sweet. He seems like a sweet man. Um, it's Yiddish for good. All right. But I'll not like, that. you know, maybe just as a mentor. I don't know that they need to be. I think connected. he's got to be there full time. They got to they <laughs> wake up together. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you can do better than Henry Winkler, I'm all ears. I would say, um, I think Martha Stewart would be a good house She's companion. She's not a lesbian. But she I don't think it's a sexual. relationship. It okay, has you want to be. Yes. What about Bryant Gumbel? Mm, okay. Someone a, a industry adjacent. Yeah. And, a, and, a, and it would be mixed. You mature. Know what I mean? mm-hmm. Just stick Russell Brand in there, and at least if yeah, she does right. something with the knives, then people are like, oh, well, that worked out. <laughs> Yeah, look, that sounds aggressive. She can't, it wasn't meant to be. No more, you know, you can't handle a Pete Davidson or something like that. We need a stable, steady as she goes, kind of, kind of do. Josh Dumel. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Just a dude who can go, no, no, no knife dance today, sweetie. We're planting bulbs. That's an interesting <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, let's come back to earth now. Your we got Dempsey would be good. Patrick Dempsey, Dempsey would be See, solid. He's a solid dude. I think she needs somebody who's in the industry, but just not a look at me person. Josh Dumel was an interesting. I'm surprised you well, know who that is. That's where my Henry Winkler part comes in. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? All right. She needs a steady, knowing hand, and it can't be coming by on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's a full-time, live-in relationship. I got it. Hmm. Who was the guy who did 60 Minutes? There were 27 people. <laughs> the first, who did the first guy. <laughs> old, old guy that did it Morally safer. Morally safer. Yes. He's dead. Well. <laughs> well. 
It's Halloween season. So you're just, I'm gonna, you I'm gonna well, we're gonna Brittany call. with a dead guy. I'm gonna see your well and raise you a well. Well, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna call upon his Irish paganists. I, I'll go to live there and just keep spirit. an eye on her. You Something could do it. Happen there. Yeah, you're an you enforcer. I do. Ray Donovan. She needs Ray Donovan. Oh yeah. Um, so, that, that. Irish. You ever see you ever see the show Ray Donovan with Liev Schreiber? No. Oh, it's a great show. Yeah, Liev, Liev Schreiber. Liev Schreiber. Right. Liev. Yeah, she needs a Ray Donovan in her life. Or maybe we could wrestle Ferris Bueller away from Jessica. Matthew, Matthew Broderick. Parker, yeah. You know what I mean? We go That's like, not Look, bad. He, first off, you're tired of his dick. Secondly, she needs him a lot more than you do. You're on, the, you're on the set all day. Okay, got it. You know what I mean? But she needs that. So there's need- got to be a normal celebrity that enters her life. What if we're the ones that are the fools and, and she's doing this specifically because she knows it's going to be discussed about. Maybe she's fine. Maybe she's like, I'm just going to play this crazy card a little longer while yeah, everyone thinks I'm crazy. It doesn't take much to outsmart the internet. I think if she gets real good with uh, dance with knives all of a sudden, <laughs> someone will commercialize that sticker in Vegas and she's back on top of mm-hmm. the world again. Oh, like, yeah. It's, so it's how good are you with the oh, knives? Oh, there's going <laughs> to be endorsements like the Ginsu. That's what I mean. Yeah. 2.0 yeah. is going to Come in there. Yeah. I, I have three dogs. This is going to be my Halloween costume. I have to be honest. <laughs> well, it's less controversial than Adam. Yeah, I'm so going back to it. Mr. T. You can walk around with two <laughs> knives these days and you get more trouble with blackface. That's right. Adam will be the one trouble. Um, are, and also, speaking of female pop singers, Pink is also in the news. So she mm. performed in San Antonio recently. And uh, this guy in the audience was holding up his cell phone towards her with a message on it. She, she stops like, oh, what is that? And here's the uh, here's a clip of her. I went to, what does that say? What? Oh, wow, you're making a whole point right now, aren't you? Yes! 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 Do you feel good about yourself? Are you going to be all right? You spent all this money to come here and do that? What? I'll tell you what it says in a little bit. I'm going to have to buy a, a Birkin bag with that ticket, buddy. Get that shit out of here. It's a bald guy. Bald guy holding up his cell phone with a big, with some text on it. He came here tonight to talk about circumcision. Oh, God. That's right. So, the, uh, he gets kicked out. So, the cell phone said, circumcision, cruel and unusual. Mm. The, the people that are against circumcision are really militant about it. And they're weird. I mean, so here's here's the time we're living it. I've studied <laughs> I've studied dicks. these people. About, history's just gonna be all about guys' dicks. This is we important. talked about breaking your pussy for twenty minutes. Now <laughs> it's wrong. TikTok. You're not wrong. <laughs> now it's dick talk, sweetie. Turnabout is fair play. Um, <laughs> all right. So th- they will say that somebody has been you know maimed or desecrated or whatever like the hard the hardcore i mean it's it's same it's like you taking a couple of gay books out of the library is not a book burning on a you know national level and circumcision is not defiling your own hog but these guys are hardcore about it and they're pissed now they're really just pissed at their mom that's kind of and their dad whoever gave the green light to the foreskin removal is who they're pissed off but they they look at themselves as like veterans who lost a limb in a war like that's how oh what the, as long as not? it wasn't vietnam and you're a troop i think we'd be doing all yeah right. <laughs> i was a colonel you know three tours but in the oh, circumcision troop we need uh prosthetic Skin, foreskin. <laughs> we have arms, legs, we have everything else now. These guys. Oh, like would, a little silicone hat. Yes, that's right. They try a, news, to, a newsy cap. They try to stretch out what, what was left, and they use weights and clamps and, and everything. It's a what? whole. I, yes, and they're know, weird and there's militant. There's no Irish people involved in this. No. You're saying the we, that's a very Gosh. American we. There's no Mexican, there's no black, and there's no Irish. This is, this is not them. This yeah. is not but what they do. It's it's a funny old thing because like, you can never get full on support for this no matter what your argument is because half of the people listening are extremely committed to what you think is the wrong answer. Like they get they can strap the weights on or whatever, but you're never convincing someone on the other side of it. But what I was wondering on this is why is he at a pink concert? Like why, how did that well, become the moment? Has she talked about would, it or sang about it or? See, I was thinking the same thing. Like, is that really the place where you want to? Uh, yeah, it seems it kind of random. Message and well, yeah, in front worked. in front of the circles. K 
okay, convenient, Mart, you get carted off. Like you, you're insane. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You don't reach that many eyeballs. Maybe just looking for eyeballs. Yeah, this is the new crazy person screaming. This is how crazy people scream now. Like right. he was saying before with Britney, it's not that hard to sway the internet. It's not that hard to post something. He probably knew it was going to go viral. He probably paid an expensive ticket. Mm-hmm. What, $1,500? It's cheaper yeah, than a social right media front. manager for the month. This mm-hmm. guy got a video with probably, uh, do we know how many views are on that video now? Pro- I would imagine at least a million or something. It's such a weird thing to stop the show for, though. If you were here, you wouldn't you wouldn't stop to acknowledge that. You'd be just, Get out. what are you doing? Very weird. But you can hold up in the sign. You can write anything on a sign, but wait, I wouldn't I wouldn't acknowledge it if it was in the show. If you're a comic, you're going to roast the hell out of him, but it wouldn't be anything else. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're not adding to it. Is she well, public about circumcision? Why? Do yeah, we, just, do we deduce missing. why pink? I don't know. I mean, we used to do, like, free Nelson Mandela or something like that. Now we're down to four skins. We just don't. We're too. We're too scattered in our messaging. Pink. You know? Pink is one of your celebrity. I do know a lot about. Obviously, because she's epic with the music. But she's married to one of my childhood heroes, which was Mad Mike Metzler, who was one of the first guys doing backflips on motorbikes when I grew up racing right. dirt bikes or trying to race dirt bikes. Yeah, that mm-hmm. tracks. He's a that wild tracks. Man. I think she's still married to him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like but her anyway. too. I thought she's married to Carrie Hart. Is that the same guy? She is married Mike to Metzler. Carrie Hart. Oh, maybe I made all that up in my he, head. No, no, he's, he's, also, he's, he's married also, to a motorcross yeah, he's rider. He's a motocross guy. That was Mike Messler. It's Carrie Hart. Yeah. I Unless know. she dumped one uh, 250 no, I'm just motorcycle guy, guy for another 250. <laughs> is he Told you, I know nothing. They put me on that Twitter game. I'm like, I know nothing. Even the ones I hold up as heroes, the facts are wrong. Well, maybe Mike Metzler <laughs> could get with Britney Spears then. Yes, yeah, Mike there you Metzler. Go. That's right. Okay. We need an extreme I, motocross guy to bring her down to earth. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's such a weird thing. So he got kicked out in the end, and what happened yeah. over this, or why is it just so kicked controversial? Out. Well, just because it's a random thing for someone to get kicked yeah, out of. It's like, oh, I need to get my circumcision message. Do you think I'm he wrong. was prepping in the bathroom, like <laughs> zooming in? <laughs> do you think this, this guy right bigger screen? Do you think this guy has a woman, and if that woman like is going out with this guy? She got to go like, we're going out with the Phillips tonight for dinner. <laughs> okay. Just please don't bring up the foreskin, the, the, the circumcision <laughs> stuff. They've heard it. I, I know you're going to have a few drinks. Like, don't, don't get it. And then at some point, a whole cod is going to show up and they go, they're going to get a knife out. They're going to yeah. go, we're going to debone it. And it's going to go, that's what happened to my penis <laughs> shortly after. Was, and you know. What kind of cut do you want? Oh, I don't uh. want to be cut by a moil. I'll tell you that. The loin. Give me the loin cut. <laughs> hey, the woman give- is going to hear this story over. Yes. And, uh, and then then they're going to go out to dinner with another couple. And they say, did you know Tammy's pregnant? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Okay. Oh. Please. No. <laughs> Don't start in. Do not start. Like, you know. Do you yeah. think his reveal is bigger? Because it seemed having a cell phone was such a small reveal yeah. for a big concert. Like, That's if what it's I was thinking. Intimate How's... setting. Is it like, an, did he hire like a plane to go over the house and say something? Is yeah, it like right. a larger? You Americans normally go way bigger right. than that. It's normally yeah. hanging behind the back of a plane. Right. This guy yeah. just got the smallest screen he could possibly <laughs> yeah. bring and stood among thousands of people right. and went, this will work. And it did. What happened to poster board? That's the American yeah, dream. Yeah, what happened to the Billboard. poster board? Yeah. What happened to a t-shirt? <laughs> All right. Let me wrap this and give some plugs along the way. Sharp Tongue is the name of the podcast with Jesse May Peluso. Thank and you. And then uh, Surviving Paradise. You look for that coming up as well. JesseMay.com for all the live dates. David Nyhill, man, been there and done that. Yeah. <laughs> Cultural appreciation, full special available on YouTube and then live dates as well. David Uh Me, Irvine Improv, October 11th. Uh, Brad Williams going to be there. Adam I Ray's, Adam coming, Ray's too. coming by oh, too. No, but I, don't I think just we played. Have it on there. I did some like crazy golf with the dude. Those fellas, they just true great and, guys. Oh, they're brilliant. Did you jump off the cliff after? <laughs> I didn't, but I, I, I did say some inappropriate. Cobbs <laughs> coming up October thirteenth and fourteenth, San Francisco. Be doing that, and until next time, this is Adam for Jesse Maine, David, and Chris Max Pat saying, Mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>